welcome to Bothering the Band. Today is a great day, and I know I say that all the time, but today is extra special because we have Nick, the bassist for one of my from one of my favorite bands, Bayside. Give it up, give it up. Thanks for being here, man. How are you? Of course, thank you for having me. I'm uh, having a decent Monday. Just uh, I, before we went live, I was telling you about how bad I am at scheduling things or planning things or you know, just being a basic adult. So I, uh, I've been running around all day, kind of handling some stuff here and there, but it's one of those things where I feel like I also just didn't accomplish anything at all, even though I've been busy all day. So good little Monday I, we got uh, here. I, well, I have to ask, what's the last thing you were late for that you missed? Oh, I'm never late. I'm never late. Never. Well, but I'm also never like super early either. I will, I will literally be absolutely on time. Simply punctual. <laughs> yeah, Simply exactly. Punctual is the name of a n- another Bayside song. <laughs> yes. Um, so I have to start this uh, because we were having an internal debate, mm-hmm. and uh, I want to ask how you pronounce your last name because I've only it, it hit me. I've only read it for my yeah. for twenty years. Mm-hmm. I've never heard anyone say it. Yeah. Well, I, it's a tricky question because. Uh, so my father is from Iran and uh, the proper, I guess, like Persian pronunciation would be more like Gunbarian. But the twist on all of that is uh, I'm from Long Island. So it's always just been Ganbarian. Ganbarian. So, Do you have any nicknames? Did you have any growing up? No, because just because that last name was just so difficult. Plus, I, I don't I wasn't ever really in uh, circles that would necessarily like demand a nickname, you know, like I had a, a few close like guy friends growing up, but we weren't like overly like bro or sporty to the point of like needing a nickname like you would get in hockey or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, even if I was, it would probably get pretty. uh pretty out there just because there's nothing that like rhymes with my last name or sounds you know anything uh particular that like would remind you of uh like you just wouldn't get anything out of my last name so someone would have to like come up with something based off like my personality or something like that yeah well before the end of this we'll try to think of a nickname yeah (laughs) just something really bad and bro like you said yeah (laughs) (laughs) really like long islandy bro yeah my least favorite thing ever (laughs) nikki g G. yeah exactly that's that's one you know nikki g it's it's easy enough it's not clever but no no well thanks for clarifying that again of course i'm not even kidding um i've seen i've seen you guys live big fan this is a bucket list interview for us um let's talk hockey man yeah Please. So I wore this. I wore this for you and for Abby. <laughs> awesome, awesome. This is who I'm going for tonight. Really, I, I think I'm too much. So the only fan I'm a New York Rangers fan for you, you know since you I was do. 12. Right. Um, and I, I think over the course of this interview, you will figure out uh, how my brain works. But I, I, the new liking the New York Rangers is one of the only like purely emotional things that uh i don't really my fandom doesn't like exist in facts when it comes to the rangers i just see the jersey and the logo and the team and i'm like i love you i love you i don't care who's on the team who's coaching they just got a new coach like today like a couple hours ago um but i guess my point is being the natural rival of the Rangers is the New York Islanders where I'm from. And most people, well, I wouldn't even say most people, a lot of people on long Island are Islanders fans. Mm -hmm. Um, And I just have this like irrational, emotional hatred of them, but I love hockey. I love, I, I recognize when teams are great. I recognize when teams work hard, when they're well coached, I watch this like current Islanders team and I'll just be like, man, there's really nothing to dislike about them except for that they are the Islanders and I hope they all die and I want Nassau Coliseum <laughs> to burn down and that's it. I don't know how to be any other way. Like my hockey eyes are just like, this team is incredible, but I hate them. And every round that they advance makes my life more miserable. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. There, There's 
something you said that it's definitely from your childhood where you just mm -hmm. you like the logo you love the jerseys mm -hmm. you know and i'm like that too i i'm I'm a New Yorker. Abby's rolling her eyes right now. <laughs> talk about New York too much on this podcast. Anytime someone mentions New York, I'm like, I yeah. love um, I actually work for the Florida Panthers part time, nice. mm -hmm. like just for fun. Cool. Um, so I, I, I don't know. I'm split across the board. I love any New York team. I love the Habs. And now I'm, I was rooting for the Panthers. So yeah, I like that team. Again, yeah. it, it gets to me like past the Rangers, Islanders, sort of like a tertiary devils thing. Those are all the like emotional, like my emotions will cloud my, my senses. But other than that, I really just love good hockey and great players. So like, yeah. I was happy the Panthers finally got it together this year. And then, you know, loved watching Nathan McKinnon, uh, absolutely am totally over the Oilers and the Leafs I'm I just don't respect those franchises anymore I'm done like I'm done yeah, taking them seriously beat them. Yeah. um Abby is messaging me right now saying go go bolts yeah go bolts for sure she's a bolts fan <laughs> put, uh, they put, lost last night I know I, I really do think again I get very cerebral about these things and I know I don't respect the Islanders because they've been bad for so long. I know that kind of slightly counteracts what I just said. I don't respect them as like a franchise. I think this current team is great. I don't respect them as a franchise because they were really irrelevant for decades. Just, these are facts. Yeah. So I, I do think that there's carryover, though. I do think that teams don't respect them to this day, even though they're incredible and incredibly coached. I do think that a team like Tampa Bay, even though they played them last year, even though Tampa Bay is clearly better i just think that they like don't respect when they see the islanders because there's just Honestly. decades upon decades of them not needing to worry about them so i don't know there's something to that because i do think that tampa didn't really show much in game one and there's really not a lot of reason for that uh we should just turn this into a hockey podcast yeah um are you speaking of podcasts are you in your setup where you do yep. the maker Yep, this is my little Star Wars nerd cave. Yeah, yeah. For <laughs> I'm sure everyone listening to this, because of you, knows that you run. You're a co-host of a, a Star Wars podcast. Thank the Maker. Yep. With uh, William Ryan Key, who we had on here as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I have to ask. Um, this is yes or no. You you can elaborate if you want. Jar Jar Binks, yes or no. Uh, I mean, I, uh, <laughs> it's funny. He's uh, wound up being a totally inconsequential character. I mm -hmm. think that uh, it, my thing with like Star Wars being for kids is weird because sure, it's always been for kids, but I feel like the original trilogy didn't pander to kids. Mm -hmm. It was just cool and kids liked it. Then the prequels came around and it pandered to kids. And that's where George Lucas went wrong. So I feel like someone like Jar Jar pandering to kids and like tripping and stepping in shit. It's just like, you know, like Han Solo didn't do that. Luke Skywalker didn't do that. And kids loved those characters. Like why all of a sudden are you like leaning on some like clown to sell toys or, you know, push a plot forward or something like that. So I, I, I literally have a shelf of, Jar Jar Binks memorabilia and toys and figures and stuff like that in my guest room. Um, mostly because when me and my lady started dating, uh, I just kind of created this false narrative that she loved Jar Jar Binks. So I would get her toys all the time to the point of taking it one step further and putting a full shelf, well, two full shelves of Jar Jar Binks memorabilia in our guest room. So it's like a joke that kind of became like true where now if we see Jar Jar, we're like Jar Jar. <laughs> yeah. You like force through. I, I, one, I love that you started that answer very edu educated and diplomatic. Yeah. And then it went to like, I feel you know, like this joke you forced into the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's incredible. I mean, I have fun with it. I love Star Wars just as much as anyone else who claims they love Star Wars, but it's uh it's i mean like the new york rangers it's just a sense of joy in my life like i that's i'm, I'm gonna be 41 in two months like there's very few things that 
have been with me my whole life. And, and those are two, you know, sources of just pure joy for me that like I have from my childhood that I don't ever want to let go. And like when either of those things are imperfect, I don't talk shit. I'm patient and I understand. And, yeah. and I, I know that they're meant to be enjoyed, not cause me emotional pain. <laughs> Yeah, even their missteps are have something sacred about them. Yeah, totally. Because of how what it represents to you. Yeah, I get absolutely. it. Absolutely. Um, what's your favorite animal? It's very specifically my dog Finn. Oh. <laughs> I Is never that- uh I never was a dog person growing up. We didn't have uh in my household, we didn't have dogs um growing up. I think once my sister was born, me and my sister are nine years apart. Once she was born, uh, we got a couple more pets in the house. Like I know we had parakeets and then eventually a cat, which I'm not really a cat person, but I don't, I don't mind them. Uh, but I didn't have my first dog until I was like in my mid twenties with, uh, the girl I was dating at the time. And ever since then, I've always had a dog. So definitely full on dog person at this point. Do you spell Finn with one N or two? Two, two N's. That's the correct way. Yeah. Well, that's my low key. When we got Finn, uh, I was like, well, we have to name it something Star Wars, right? And, you know, my lady's, uh, let's say, tolerant of my Star Wars uh, (laughs) fascination. Um, So I don't know. When I really try to break down my fascination with Star Wars, I really try to like be cool about it and not overly nerdy about it. So I was like, I want to name our dog something Star Wars related but I don't want to name it like Han Solo or something stupid, you know? Yeah. So Finn wound up being like Star Wars-y enough, but also like could not be a Star Wars name. One syllable, which is great for a dog name. He's kind of like white and gray, like poodle mix. And uh, I was like, yeah, his the way his head grows in kind of looks like a, a Stormtrooper helmet. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, Finn. And she didn't hate that, you know? So I was just like, okay, cool. I really, I, my first choice was Obi. Not Obi-Wan, just Obi, Mm O-B-I. And then she came up with some story that I don't believe about her um, her father called her mother Obi as a nickname when they were dating. And I was like, you're making that up because that has never come up in like the couple of years that we were together. I've never heard that story. I've never heard him call her Obi. (laughs) <laughs> You're making this up so we don't name the dog Obi. And I, I lost that battle, but slightly won because we went with Finn, which is great. You got to appreciate that uh, that spin, though. Yeah. <laughs> she was that adamant about not naming Yeah, yeah. Him. We have a friend whose dog name is Leia. Yeah, that's great. We're I do, all... too, also, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're all got a friend. Team. That's a good one. I, I honestly, if, you know, I don't know if it's in the cards, but if I ever had a kid, I would for sure try and go the Luke or Leia route for yeah. whatever, uh, whatever kid I had. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you owned a clothing store, what would you call it while we're on names? Yeah. Um, I've been in the market of uh, naming a kind of radio show that I've been, uh, that I'm going to launch hopefully by next week. Um and I was coming up with names. And one thing that I came up with, because it's been in the news a little bit lately, was geriatric millennial. <laughs> Ooh, um, yeah, yeah. So let's go with that with for a clothing brand. Because I feel I do truly... Geriatric's a weird word because it sounds like super, super old. Yeah. Um, and millennial, obviously, is a very specific younger uh, time. But I guess people who are my age are now considered geriatric millennial. And I, I do feel... I don't feel like an adult, but I also don't feel like I'm 20. So I just feel like I'm somewhere in, in yeah. between there where I'm I'm holding on to, like I've said, I'm holding on to the things that I've enjoyed my entire life. I'm not giving in to the, the rat race of humanity. Um, so I don't know, geriatric mer- millennial. I think it's got a and, ring to it. And what are we selling at geriatric millennial? <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. At a risk of it not being totally just Urban Outfitters, I want to say like st- retro stuff, you know, like <laughs> a shirt you had when you were five, but size large or extra large because you're grown now. <laughs> like skate or die. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there you go. Um, so you are um, 
part owner of Legal Speed, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. And it's a coffee company. Yep. Um, looks super cool, but the theme is like bike, like coffee on bikes, right? Yeah, I mean, we really when we we Chris, the drummer of Bayside, and I uh, started the company basically on tour. We always we had our bikes with us, and we would just. Uh, ride around whatever city we were in, look for coffee, look for food. Um, since we're both varying degrees of vegetarian or vegan, um, we would always just try to find cool spots. And, and it's weird being on tour. Sometimes you don't, you play the cities like 10 times in you know, five years and you don't get to see anything. So once we started to bring our bikes around, we got to go somewhere that was 10 miles away, four miles away, instead of just traveling around the block yeah. to see what the closest coffee place or food spot was. Uh, so one day we were uh, in North Carolina, actually, and our friend had moved uh, tattoo studios. So she wanted to give us just like a quick little like tattoo, you know, the same tattoo for both of us. And, um, you know, we were bouncing around like a uh, bike, bike boys, coffee boys, you know, like something absolutely stupid and uh, legal speed. I, I brought up. And it's in reference to there's a, a lyric from uh a song called Mr. Coffee by Lagwagon and, and they reference legal speed. Oh, yeah, in it. Um, so I brought that up. We got a tattoo and on the, on the, we got a legal speed tattoo. And on the way back to the bus on our bikes, we were like, Hey, we should totally do something with that. That's a really good idea. Like we should have a cafe, you know? And the first idea was, yeah, let's open a cafe. Like I'm moving to California. We're going to hang out all the time. We love coffee. We need something to do with like, we don't, we obviously don't tour as much as we used to in Bayside. So we need something like a supplemental career, something to take up a lot more time since we have like nine, 10 months off a year from Bayside now. So we pivoted a little bit right away from that and started to roast coffee and learn to roast coffee. So eventually when we do have a cafe, we could, you know, supply our own beans and we don't have to kind of we cut out the middleman of needing someone else to roast it for us so um for the last four years we've uh slowly built it up and let it grow organically and um you know we've been putting out feelers here and there and looking at some spots to try and have like a roastery cafe sort of thing so hopefully in the next year or so we uh figure that out and actually open a cafe here in southern california oh that's cool so i have to ask how do you take your coffee as long as it's good coffee, just black. I don't put, I don't put much in it. Yeah. That's one thing that I've learned in the last 10 years or so. Um, you know, like, like my coffee journey was on, on Long Island where I'm from, which is like up until sort of recently devoid of a lot of culture, which is weird because you're that close to Manhattan, but like yeah. Manhattan coolness and culture doesn't really like permeate Long Island. Long Island is its own weird monster. Um, so coffee on Long Island was Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts. So you don't really get people drinking like black Starbucks coffee. They're always putting milk and sugar in it and stuff like that. So, and I also never really liked hot beverages. So I didn't really get into coffee uh, really until like 15 years ago or so. And even at that point, I was doing milk and sugar and all this stuff. So I would wind up just getting iced coffees. Cold brew wasn't really like a well-known thing. I would always get iced coffees from Starbucks with sweetener in it. And then, you know, the healthier I became and the more understanding of health and my body and what I put in my body, that the more I understood that stuff, I was like, yeah, six pumps of artificial sweetener and Starbucks cold brew is probably not good. So I like weaned myself off of that, just kept going down like one pump over the course of like a month or two to then enjoying black bitter iced coffee. Then let's see, what warp tour was it? Maybe 2014, uh, the drummer of Anne Berlin, Nate had just started roasting coffee um, for his company called King State out of Tampa, Florida. And uh, I told him what my Starbucks order was. And he's like, all right, I got you, I got you. I'm gonna do an iced pour over type of thing. So at that point, I had no clue what he was what he was doing. And he poured me probably like some Ethiopia single origin uh, iced pour over thing. And it tasted like floral and it had its own sweetness. And it was like not dark and it just really like opened my eyes. So some, from that point on, I was just all about like 
you know, specialty coffee, third wave coffee, whatever you want to call it, just, just properly roasted coffee and not burnt, oily, dark, bitter coffee, which is really strange that that's what people assume is like strong when it comes to coffee. It's just yeah. actually misinformation. It's kind of almost the opposite. Like if it's roasted properly and a little lighter, you're, you're kind of keeping more of the caffeine in the bean. So that's actually stronger, but you know, it's been marketed in America and probably all over the world as dark and bitter means it's strong. And it's just, yeah. it's a marketing thing as opposed to a truthful thing. Is that why the blonde at Starbucks is more caffeinated? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's all about, I mean, just the, the simplest way I could put it is, I mean, if you have a bean of anything and you just burn it, you're burning everything out of it yeah. and it's just going to taste you know, ashy or bitter or whatever. If you roast it properly at the proper times and temperatures, you're keeping a lot of its natural flavors in it and including you're not burning out a bunch of caffeine. So uh, it just tastes better and it's stronger. Man, I'm going to have to uh, remember this next time <laughs> I go order coffee. And yeah. Is Nick, Nick going to judge this order? <laughs> I'm not, we're not judgmental. We don't, we don't like it either super dark or super light you know we want the the coffee we roast and uh brew for people to be reminiscent enough of what they like only better so we're not gonna i i still every time i go to disney i have to drink starbucks so i know what my starbucks order is you know <laughs> like i'm not uh or if i'm in an airport it's gonna be starbucks for the most part so i know i know what to order at starbucks and uh we're, we're not judgmental fair enough <laughs> All right. Speaking of hot beverages, this is real dumb. Um, if you were taking a bath in a in hot Mountain Dew, yeah, would you drink a little bit? Uh, my girlfriend's favorite beverage is Diet Mountain Dew. Oh yeah. So if it was, if I was bathing in it and it was hot and diet, she might take a sip. Um, I mean, I would take a sip to try it, sure, but it's not my favorite. I'm not really a. I've weaned again with knowing what belongs in my body and doesn't food wise. I, I try to not drink too much uh, soda. I like that. You didn't even touch on that. You're like, why would I be in a bath of hot Mountain Dew? I don't, I don't, I don't know. Uh, like, maybe it happens one day. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Shit happens. Um, if you started a cult, what would the main belief be? Um, let's see. I don't want to, I want to put more thought into it than be kind. That's not, that should be a tenant, but not the main thing. <laughs> I, I would almost make it, probably have to phrase it a little differently, but the, the main tenant would be that just because someone thinks differently, asterisk, just because someone thinks differently doesn't mean that they're wrong or bad. You know, like everyone needs to be a little bit more tolerant of uh, other people's opinions. The asterisk is obviously assholes or racists, sexist, bigots. Those people could all die and fuck themselves. So yeah. that's where the asterisk is. But uh, and then yeah, I mean, I think there's I, I in the last decade of Twitter and social media and stuff. You think that your opinion or your voice or whatever you say matters and can change the world. And I realize that it doesn't. And I cannot believe that people have not learned that yet. <laughs> I, so I, I, I watch, I, I see hot takes, I see opinions, I see all that stuff. And then just out of morbid curiosity, I go read the comments and I'm like, still, you still think that arguing on the internet with a stranger who doesn't know you or respect you is worth your time. It's like, I, I don't know. I, I wish it was. I thought there was a time where you could have a conversation with people and change their mind, but uh, that that doesn't exist. So <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is to that, but I know that I do not partake anymore. And, and it's hard because there is a whole culture of like, you know, which I understand uh, there's a whole culture of like silence, meaning you don't care. And it's like, I definitely, that's definitely not it for me. And up until recently, I've been pretty vocal and supportive about a lot of things I believe in, but I just, I know it's an echo chamber. I know people who 
follow me most likely agree with a lot of things I have to say. And like I said, if there's someone who doesn't, I don't think Twitter or any social media is really the uh, platform to change someone's mind. It's unfortunately only uh, used for negative things and cursing at people. I use it for three things, movies, mm -hmm. sports, and comedy. Yeah, the definitely. Only thing I use it for, either sharing or trying to be funny. Yeah. <laughs> You Did know. you lose my video? I th no, I still got you. Where are you? Oh, wait. Gotcha. I don't okay. know if you scroll out of it. Sometime. Yeah, no, I got it. Still getting used to this new computer. Got you back, though. All right. Well, this brings us to what's the last thing you bought online? Um, Let's see. For sure, Star Wars related. Uh, actually, the last thing I received was... It's really hard since I'm a New York Rangers fan to find any Rangers gear that's not red, white, and blue. I'm not, I don't really wear a lot of uh, colors. They have to be very specific colors. I'm wearing a yellow shirt yellow right now, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's a color I'm trying to introduce. I'm trying to introduce the color. This is a legal speed shirt. So I was, I was, yeah. I got I got to wear that. But um, so I can't find a lot of like black Rangers gear. So when I do find it, I normally pick it up. So I got a uh, an ad on Instagram for like a Black Rangers like dad hat, but the logo was like shiny gold. And I was like, you know what? This is awesome. So I put it in my cart and I'm like, why is shipping $15? Whatever. YOLO. I'm buying it. So I realized it's coming from Australia for some reason from a crazy like, uh, you know, hype beast type of store that's all shoes and hats and stuff like that and uh makes sense why they had that hat that i've never seen before so i bought it wound up being a 50 dollars hat but uh it's worth it it came rather quickly too from australia um i had it like within i would say a week to 10 days which has not normally been the case when i order anything from overseas so uh that was technically the last thing that i got in the mail but probably the day before that i got a sweet star wars revenge of the sith shirt that I ordered. <laughs> is it the one you posted online? Um, oh, shoot. Okay. No, that the one you're referencing is the one that I got the day before that. Um, that one is there's this company called Tatooine Traders Co. And they just make bootleg Star Wars shirts. But their whole vibe is that they're, um, they're kind of like old school rap uh, yes. <laughs> like t shirts. Yeah. So they look like they would be like, three six mafia t-shirts but it's yes. like anakin skywalker and just design choices are definitely like early photoshop kind of choices yeah. and the layouts all kind of it just looks bootleg and it's i loved it and I it's perfect it. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um that's a good way to describe it um folks listening go to nick's instagram and uh <clears throat> it's a cool shirt because it's not like any other star yeah. wars shirt. And they they have a bunch you know it's it's I feel like they lean heavily on the prequels, but you could get a Padme shirt and Obi-Wan shirt. Uh, you know, so they look a little bit like old school wrestling tees in a weird way yeah. here and there. So it, it's rad, but they don't have, I think they do drops. So I don't think you could get that Anakin shirt anymore. Maybe they'll bring it back one day, but uh, they just recently put out a cut, like three more shirts. So um, you just yeah, don't they, want us fighting your style. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> we won't what's the last thing you bought in an actual store do groceries count because i went to target and trader joe's today um my next question actually target yeah or Walmart? uh definitely target um mostly i mean i, ge I generally feel like it's just nicer there yeah it's really strange uh to be a, i guess a little uh judgmental on my behalf but like the, the, the Target and Walmart are directly across from each other here in uh, Orange, California. And the Target feels like you're in California and the Walmart feels like you're in like middle America somehow. Yeah. And I'm just like, the the clientele always seems different. Um, it's just messier and like, it's like, 
here's the shit you need asshole go you know here you just fucking yeah. book, go buy it that's what walmart feels like and target's like oh i like this song oh it's bright in here it's very colorful oh cool nice awesome they have some healthy food wow okay cool just overall vibe seems better and to me walmart is like uh more of a tour stop also like yeah. we'll, we'll pull up to a walmart at like 2 a.m and hop in there or we'll leave the bus parked in a walmart parking lot and maybe at like 6 a.m before the bus leaves I'll, I'll hop into walmart but uh you know what it's also based off of is the target the couple of targets i have like four targets within two miles in each direction and i only have one walmart but as far as star wars toy collecting goes i have better luck at target and i have actual zero luck at walmart like the walmart here does not carry star wars toys and i just think that that is so bizarre so so bizarre they only carry like wrestling and like shitty metal. i don't know what they carry and i don't know why they like the whole aisle for over two years is just empty and i'm like you know you guys dedicate a whole aisle to this i know I'm, i know it's not a big money maker for you it's just toys but it is never full so put something else here or fill the pegs like <laughs> yeah. everything is empty and i'm i know how business works it's not it's one aisle it's like one aisle in the entire store it's not a big money maker it's like just put something else there don't just have empty pegs of stuff that you should be getting in that you're not and it's as a collector it's very annoying because not every walmart is like that for some reason these california walmarts are but like i'll follow instagram accounts for other toy collectors that are nationwide and it'll be like uh, Huntsville, Alabama. Look what I just got at Walmart. I'm like, I wish that. I wish my Walmart had that. You know. So other WalMarts are getting the stuff I'm looking for, just not Southern California WalMarts. So long answer, Target. Target groceries. <laughs> um, how do you feel about the slang term "bay"? Mm, I haven't used it very often. It takes a lot for me to, uh, as a geriatric millennial. I, yeah, I worry about. Um, I want to be cool, and I want to be with it, as old people would say. Um, but I also don't want to seem desperate or trying to be young or anything like that. You know, like I want to be genuine about the stuff that I like, and the the some stuff just doesn't feel like it's for me. Yeah, you know, as a almost forty year old year old man. So Bay. Never really worked for me. Um, dabbing. That was one that I was just like, I'm going to leave this one to the kids. This, one, this one's not for me. I think I found out what that was five years after it was a thing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I never really got it. Posing weird. Yeah. <laughs> also, bay. I have a real hatred for bay because it's a one syllable word shortened. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. oh, come on. Yeah. Know. Exactly. I know what you mean. <laughs> Do you? Okay. You said you're 41. Mm -hmm. Almost August I'm gonna, 6th. Okay. Uh, I'm going to be 39 this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you ever pee sitting down? Oh yeah, of course. Middle, mo middle of the night, I would say. Yeah. 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 Morning. But you know, sometimes lazy. Sometimes I'm just like, eh, it's less effort. It's also, it's just like straight up, like, one of those few weird things that's like meant to emasculate men it's like why would that yeah. mean you're because women only pee sitting down if you want to also that means you're a, it's like a very weird like unnecessarily emasculating thing it's like no yeah it works you know f yeah take it's that fine. <laughs> sexist bastards yeah um, I would say I probably do it like it's a hard 75 25 for me sitting yeah. and standing. If I'm tired, which I'm older, I'm getting tired easier. So I just want a seat, <laughs> just want to sit. Yeah, look at my phone exactly. It's easier to look at your phone while you're sitting. Also, there's no fear of dropping it into the toilet. Yeah, exactly. The other way. Um, if a stranger has something stuck in their teeth, do you tell them? Uh, yeah, definitely. Because it is it is not only distracting to me, but I I just would want someone to tell me if like my hair was fucked up, if I had something in my teeth, I got a booger, anything like tell me I can't. I It will hurt way less 
if you told me then if i walked around all day with looking like an idiot yeah and then you saw yeah. it like two hours later yeah and yeah i talked yeah. to five people like that good for you you heard it here folks nick's a real <laughs> gentleman do you believe in bad luck um yeah for sure but i think it could be a little bit more of a bad decision making but i think that there's there's for sure just i guess coincidence i don't know if coincidence is the right word yeah it should happens i guess force yeah. gump style should happens all right here's another real dumb one um <laughs> what weapon do you use to kill time um I'm, I'm using the, the, I'm thinking of like a clock or a, like hourglass, like a physical conception of time. So I'm going to say like a, a sword. Nice. I'm just going to ram a sword through an hourglass or a clock. That'd be fun. I think I took it all very literal. Yeah. <laughs> I like you, you twisted it a little bit. You yeah. took the time physicality and you, you used a different weapon. To <laughs> yeah. <that>. But, <laughs> uh, in, but also the internet. Very true. That, that's, that's a tool that kills time. Ugh. It's uh, a weapon like no other. <laughs> uh, here's another philosophical question. What does the sunset taste like? Mm. Sunset. Hard hitting here here in California it probably tastes like cotton candy Ooh. with a little maybe with a little like peach mixed in there so we, we do get some very beautiful sunsets that are like very vibrant blue and pink but then also there's there's like a, a peachy kind of color in there yeah and it's all very like it's so beautiful that you do wind up staring at it and it also never gets old when it happens so yeah. Yeah. Cotton candy with some peach in there, I'm going to say. Uh, that's, I'm getting this in. That's the correct answer. <laughs> so, um, back to weapons. <laughs> this is the real guy. Michael Bay or a bayonet? Like they're fighting each other? No, just you have to choose one. Oh. Uh, what? I don't. What else has Michael Bay done besides Transformers? That's the only thing that pops into my mind. Uh, he did uh, Top Gun. He did uh, all those. He did like Con Air, right? Or was that Don Simpson? It's I just feel like he so did all not. It's so not my action. Film. Yeah, like the those movies. I feel like I've like only seen him do Transformers, and those were Ooh. not my favorite movies. But I also don't. I'm just gonna go with Michael Bay. All right, fair enough. Bayonet is just like seems way less useful than Michael Bay. Like if I were to use Michael Bay or use a bayonet, I think I'd probably get more out of Michael Bay. Yeah. So Bad Boys, Armageddon. Okay. Those are some. There okay. you go. Um, so this is really what we had. The next question is how many of the Transformer movies have you seen? Couldn't tell you. They all <laughs> they all transform into one movie. I have no clue. <laughs> I, uh, I don't even know how many how many they have. Five? At least five, I would say. I probably saw the first three. Yeah, I think I I think I saw the first two. If I had a guess. Um I know there's one with Mark Wahlberg and then there was a Bumblebee one, and I did not see either of those. I'm gonna say five. Yeah. So I'm gonna say there's three and then those two I just mentioned, and I did not see those two. So so yeah. What is your favorite side dish? Mm, I don't want to get this wrong. First thing that popped in my mind was mac and cheese, but I don't know that that's really the case. There's a spot here called Lemonade, which is like a kind of almost like cafeteria style, like delicious salad type of thing. And they have this really good... Um, like avocado, tomato, pine nut salad. Ooh. That's very good. But let's go with mac and cheese. <laughs> okay. Um, you mentioned uh, vegan, vegetarian. Are you either? 
uh, vegetarian and when I can and something sounds delicious, absolutely eat vegan. Um, yeah. I've spent, I've really never liked meat my entire life. And uh, I kind of always thought it was gross. I always stayed away from certain things like mm. any, any sort of meat product that looked like the animal that it was when it was alive. That grossed yeah. me out always. Bones, that always grossed me out. I think I, I ate it for, you know, decades out of convenience, especially where I lived. Like I said, Long Island is just very in it itself. It's its own beast now, but it's always just been kind of like middle America to me. Um, so there wasn't a lot of vegetarian options there. Um, a little bit more of a rural spot, sort of. Um, so moving to California, I was already vegetarian and it became easier to eat vegan. And it's even easier than ever to eat vegan out here. But people like crack the vegan code and know how to make junk food vegan now. Yeah. So yes, you're not hurting animals. Yes, there might be certain fats that aren't uh, necessarily in your vegan meal, but they've figured out how to make a pretty unhealthy vegan like junk food restaurant out here. So there's, there's a bunch of those popping up. Um, so I don't mind cheese. Cheese is for sure not something that I, uh, or dairy in general, um, I try to not partake in too often just for health reasons, but they don't bother me necessarily in like animal reasons. Meat, I absolutely will not ever eat again. I know that much. Cause like I said, even when I ate meat, I didn't really, it, it, I didn't like it. <laughs> Have you ever had the chicken nuggets in the shape of dinosaurs? Yeah, I must have. Because I feel like I don't think they had them when I was growing up. But like I said, my sister's nine years younger than me. So I think that was more her era. So I'm sure I had I had some of her her chicken nuggets. Fair enough. We uh, there are six Transformers movies. Six. OK. <laughs> Not the, again, hard hitting journalism. I don't know yeah. if you knew you were signing up for this. <laughs> um, OK, so one New Yorker to the next. I wonder if you've experienced this before. If you've ever been on the phone with someone in New York, while you're in New York City, mm -hmm. they are not in New York City, and an ambulance goes by. How yeah. Nothing loud is it for that other person? I, if there's something about, in general, whether it's an ambulance or not, there's something about what the other person hears being louder than what you hear somehow. Like, yeah. especially if you're on, like, um, I don't know about AirPods, but like old school, like just iPhone headphones, you know, earbuds. There's something that like the person on the other end could hear the conversation across the room where you are, even though you can't hear it. There's just something about that. It's a weird phenomena that like I will be on like a Bayside conference call and someone will be like, Nick, who is talking? Like, what is going on? I'm like, I don't know. There's someone like across the street talking. You hear them? like yeah. they're like we hear them louder than you i'm like I, <laughs> I i don't know how that's possible but okay there's a bird in the distance you're like i'm yeah. inside yeah <laughs> um have you ever gotten a speeding ticket um i don't think so because honestly in new york i did not speed in California, it's mandatory that you do speed. So I don't know that speeding tickets are a thing out here. I'm sure they exist, but truly everybody is going 80 miles, 85 miles an hour on every freeway at all times in California. So I don't know how they stop that. Um, no, I've gotten tickets for like, definitely like running a light or stop sign. Not often, definitely not often. The last thing I, man, I did get a ticket probably two years ago. I want to say maybe it was, oh, it's for being on my phone for sure. Um, but I got out of it because the cop wrote the wrong year on the ticket. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I went to go pay it. And they're like, this isn't on the system. And it's because this isn't in the system because your ticket says something wrong. And if less the cop fixes it, you don't have to pay it. So if he fixes it, 
you'll get something in the mail and he just never did. It's been two years. So wow. good for me. Yeah. Uh, I have, I have a very important favor to ask you though. Can you say hi to my friend Kelly Monday? Who's a fucking massive. Hey Kelly Monday. Hey. Speaking directly that? to you. <laughs> you heard that Kelly? You owe me one. <laughs> And then also, um, so you're kicking off a tour here, so yeah. It's wild. I mean, we've, uh, it's really weird. A lot of people are asking me if I'm excited or whatnot. And I, I for sure compartmentalize my life, whether it's a good idea or not, I just do it. I, I love being home when I'm home and I don't look forward to tour until I'm on tour. And then when I'm on tour, I love being on tour. Um, the older I get and the less we tour and the happier I am in California, when I'm on tour, I do enjoy every day, but I look forward to going home. But when I'm home, I don't look forward to tour. It's not because I don't like it. It's just, I like being home. I like my yeah, dog. I like sense. my girlfriend. It's cool. I live in California. I don't have to deal with a snowy season or anything yeah. like that. It's just rad here. So uh, moving here definitely just helped me enjoy being home more. You seem like a man of the moment too. Like your home, that's where your mind is set. Yeah, I'm like accidentally Buddhist, I think. Yeah. And like <laughs> like the more I learn about meditation or Buddhism or anything like that, I'm like, oh, I do that already. Okay. Cool. <laughs> that's the name of a store too, by the way. <laughs> I wrote that down just because I yeah. thought it was cool. <laughs> accidentally Buddhist. Um, so I'll see you at that Fort Lauderdale show. Hell yeah. I love it down there. Always, always a great time there. That's one of the few spots in the world that when we play revolution down there, <laughs> you know, that street, I don't know what it's actually called that street where like, we'll park our bus or whatever. Yeah. That is just, or something. I don't, I'm not sure, but that is one lawless place. Yeah. So on the street and shit. yeah. Like, you could, we literally bring beers from our bus and walk into a bar with beers in our hand already. You know, like it's, there's just a lot of partying that goes on that is like, I feel like there's an unspoken rule that no one gets like too rowdy in general. Cause I've been down there and it seemed like about to burst, but it never does. It yeah. seems like there is going to be an all out brawl and there never is. I'm sure. I mean, I don't hang out there all the time. I'm sure there's plenty of fights, but my, my feeling of the vibe of that one street behind the venue is just, yeah, this place is going to erupt soon. And it's kind of a cool feeling. <laughs> I was going to ask you what, like, is there a reason why no one starts their tour in Florida? It's uh, now we spread out. The, the other half of our band, Anthony and Jack, live in Nashville now. So we normally like rehearse a couple of days in Nashville. And uh, I feel like lately we just kind of head south and start in Florida. I want to say they'll, right yeah, and go up the coast and around. Uh, I don't know that we've done it the other way. I can't really remember if we've started in like Nashville and headed north or headed west. But, uh, I feel like the past couple of times since we've been kind of like our, all of our gears in Nashville. And like I said, the other two guys live there. So I feel like the last couple of tours we've started in Florida, I could be wrong, but, but that's why we're doing that. And lastly, what's next for Nick? I'm going to watch Vegas and Montreal in an hour or so. That's the immediate thing that I'm doing. Um, well, I, I, just, I spoke about it earlier. So uh, I'm going to be starting a podcast. It's more of a radio show. And I've been always wanting to do this radio show vibe, but it's really hard to play other people's music legally. Um, <laughs> so it's been difficult. Um, but the podcasting platform Anchor was bought by Spotify in the last yeah. year or so. So because that's what we use. Nice. So you might know that you can add tracks from Spotify to your podcast now. So yeah, it's only exclusively would be heard on Spotify, but Spotify is the biggest streaming service in the world. So that's not necessarily a, a drawback. So I'm going to be starting. Um, I'm hoping to launch it next week. 
um, a podcast, but it, like I said, it's more of a radio show. And the name of it is the radio radio show. Nice. Um, so that should be coming out next week. So it will only be on Spotify. I'm going to be doing it alone. I have some segments where I might be including a short little clip of a guest, but it will truly be hosted by me. A lot of music. I mean, it's been, it's always one of my passions in life and I feel like it helps keep me young and I really enjoy turning other people onto music that they might not necessarily have heard. Um, Cause especially in, in this day and age with algorithms and all that, and the older we get, we might just like stuff that we liked when we were younger and yeah. it might be hard to find uh, new music or stuff that speaks to you. Um, and I, I don't know, I hope to be able to like show some people sonically like, yeah, you can listen to like Bad Religion, but then also the Cardigans and Jenny Lewis all in the same radio hour and it's going to make sense. Yeah, exactly. You might not think to think to listen to them all at the same time, but there is something there melody wise, vibe wise, lyric wise, whatever, something that'll all make sense. And uh, and I still actively look for new bands that I think are great. Um, you know, rock and roll is just not uh, top three or five genre for music these days but yeah. it doesn't mean that people aren't making it and it deserves an outlet and whether i'm that outlet or not it's something that i want to be able to like contribute to uh, people listening to new things or even if it's old stuff they've never heard of whatever so uh so that's it i've been bouncing around with ideas like that forever me and anthony used to do a show on adobe radio called gumshoe radio um and then there's this app called Station Head that's been kicking around for a couple of years. It's been really difficult to like find traction on it. Uh, yeah. It's live radio broadcast and it integrates Apple and Spotify so you could play other people's music legally on it. But it's just, unfortunately, I love the app. Unfortunately, it's just really hard to get people to sign up and become users. I mean, yeah. it's really great. It's got a chat room. You can request songs, like all this stuff. It's literally a perfect app, but it just doesn't seem like it's like, doing what i need it to as far as finding listeners and all that type of stuff so once i heard anchor bought spotify i was like all right here's uh my radio show version 3.0 so hopefully it goes well and uh yeah that'll be coming out next week man that's super cool um same same boat we, we started this you know stupid idea because we're just music junkies like we mm-hmm. I don't, we can't play music, but we love it more than anything. Yeah, it's great. Like you said, it keeps you young. It, it's inspirational. I, I could go on and on and on. I have yeah. to ask what we always end each podcast with a song from the artist. Mm-hmm. What song do you want us to use? Um, I always love newer stuff because I feel like we only get better and better. It doesn't necessarily mean that people like our newer stuff. I'd be more than older stuff. People like our new stuff. Bayside fans love our, they're always supportive. Uh, so it's weird to say because that album's like already two years old, I feel like. Uh, I got excited. I got more excited about a song like Numb or a song like Bury Me from our latest record where I felt like we were truly writing the best Bayside songs that like we ever have, you know, like yeah. these are, this is Bayside and it's better than ever. And, and either one of those two songs I would say are just like, these are, if an alien came down right now and they're like, what'd your band sound like? I'd be like this, this is the best <laughs> representation of what we sound like. Awesome, man. Nick, that's that's our, our silly little podcast. I can't yeah. thank you enough. Everyone follow Nick on Instagram. It's Nick Bayside, right? Yeah. Yeah, please do. I uh, I do a lot of before. I do a lot of different things, podcasts and Star Wars things and just in and coffee in general. So the best way to kind of find out about whatever I got going on in my life uh, that might interest you, just just head to at Nick Bayside and You'll find everything else from there. Yeah, let's do the list right now. We got Bayside, of course. Yep. Thank the Maker Pod, Legal yep. Speed Coffee, and soon to be the Radio Radio Show. Man, this has been great. You are incredible. 
And it was so great to talk to you. Yeah, and thank you. I know so many of my friends who are going to geek out at this. <laughs> well, I appreciate yeah. it. And I know we mentioned the tour already. I mean, yeah, it's supposed to be our 20th anniversary tour, which got canceled last year. So it's now our 21st anniversary tour. So if uh, you're craving live music again and, and got some extra some extra money to spend please uh buy tickets it's gonna it's gonna be great i mean it's almost the same exact tour that we had booked last year census fail hawthorne heights and now we have the bomb pops opening up um oh, so it's gonna be great buy some tickets I'm, I'm thrilled and i know the world is thrilled so thanks again man oh uh, yeah we appreciate it uh that's it everyone follow bothering the band too on all the social mumbo jumbo and that's our show Yeah.